Hey everyone, I'm Ryan. You're watching 60 Cycle Hum, and I'm finally back with the next episode in the Fortistrat series of videos. It's been like six months, guys. I'm so sorry that it's taken so long. Uh, for those of you not familiar with the Fortistrat series, what I do is I buy an affordable Strat style guitar off the internet, and then I compare it to the previous winner of the Fortistrat. This time it's the Xavier. This was the winner last time. And the winner in this video uh, gets kept by me for the next video, but the loser gets shipped out to one of you. I'm gonna give it away. So if this guitar loses in this video for quality against the next Afford Strat, you might be able to win it by jumping through some ridiculous social media stunt hoop that I'll tell you to do at the end of the video. So anyways, uh, what guitar do I have this time? This is the Xavier. Last time this dethroned the Ert that I had. And in the previous video before that, the Ert defeated the Monoprice Indio. What do I have this time? This is an Afforda Strat classic, an affordable guitar classic. People have been praising these guitars for as long as I can remember, like 20 years I've been hearing people say that these are excellent guitars for their price. This is a Yamaha Pacifica. A lot of you requested that I cover a Pacifica in this and I kind of like, I kind of felt a lot of indecision around that because they're not a fully traditional Strat shape and they have a humbucker in the bridge, but they are such a compelling guitar for the money and they have such a great reputation of being an excellent guitar for the money. This one that I bought is not one of the nicer ones, obviously. I think there's Pacificas that are in much higher price points, but this one was, I think, 230 on Amazon, 229, something like that. We've got a box in a box, which is always a good sign. Well, a nice sign anyways. I've been getting plenty of cheap guitars over the years that just come in a single box, and it makes you wonder how often they get completely ruined in shipping. I should say that this series is sponsored by Diodario. Diodario? Man, I just forgot how to say their name correctly. I'm sorry. Diodario, I think is correct, or Diodario. I think it's Diodario. Anyways, uh, part of the sponsorship is that the winning or losing guitar, the guitar that I ship out, also gets sent out with one of the maintenance kits which I use to set up the guitar and a three pack of strings, the same strings that I'm gonna put on this guitar. I do a setup on each new guitar to mirror the previous winner. And I put the same style and gauge of strings on there as well. Oh, I opened the box upside down. Ooh, the thick manual for a Strat style guitar. And the wiggle stick is in there and your Allen keys and whatnot. No Radio Shack cable with this one. There's always a bit of surprise. Here we go. I went with the metallic red, which last I checked is already sold out on Amazon. So if you want one of these, you can't get it in this color for the time being. So what do we have here? Like I said, it's not a fully traditional Strat. Different body shape, unique headstock shape, HSS layout here, master volume and master tone, five-way switch, but it does have a Strat bridge. It, you know, it is, in concept, it's a fat Strat, you know? So it's not too far off, but it's not doing that fully classic Strat style thing. Kind of a unique truss rod cover on there. I don't mind that at all. I don't even have it tuned up yet, but I'm gonna feel the frets in the neck and stuff. Look for any glaring quality control issues. I have a cheap looking single ply pick guard. Doesn't really bother me though. The Xavier has a three ply. Most people prefer that as a look. I actually like a single ply from time to time. I think it's kind of a fun look in its own way. The frets are mirror polished. They are very shiny. 
different style nut compared to a strat. Very gentle break angle across that nut too. Normally I would have expected some string trees further up here on maybe the D and the G to increase that break angle just a little bit. Like that wiggle stick. The stick goes in very normally. It's a longer, straighter style wiggle stick, which is what I prefer. All right, let's get it tuned up and see what it sounds like. It has a side jack here instead of the normal strap top jack style hardware. And it is made out of plastic, which is a Gibson style thing to do. The thought being that you prefer a plastic jack plate because if this does encounter trauma, the jack plate will break instead of pulling the screws out of the body. I don't know. What do you guys think about that sort of concept? I tend to prefer a metal jack plate, but that's me. All right, let's tune it up and see how it sounds in stock condition and how it plays, of course. It has a really like bright and sudden attack to it. Like this is not a mellow guitar. Like it's got this like cutting sort of feel to the sound and the way it plays. Like really, really present. A little bit of a twang too. Maybe a lot of bit of twang. It's got brand new strings, it's fresh out of the box. It's not gonna stay in tune with wiggle stick abuse. I have a feeling a little bit of lube on the nut is going to address that just fine. The neck feels a bit cheap and abrasive to me. Like, the frets aren't sprouting or anything like that but there's a little bit of a rough edge around the bevel of the frets that are, that are catching my hand a little bit. I'll compare that to the Xavier really quick. Yeah, the Xavier's, I mean, they don't feel premium, but they don't catch in quite the same way. A little bit of filing or sandpapering around each fret would help both these guitars a lot but there's something about the neck of the Xavier and the frets on the edges that feel a little bit nicer to me. Where this has that very kind of like stark and sharp abrasive sort of feel. I think just the edges of the fretboard itself feel a bit sharper to me. It's a little bit more unpleasant to my hand. Feels like a pretty flat radius. I'm gonna guess it's, it's a 12 or 14. I don't know for sure. Oh, I think just overall the feel of the neck on the Xavier feels more natural to me. But I think the sound of the pickups is good. The build quality looks really good so far. I'm not picking up any weirdness. The nut is a little bit smaller than the width of the fretboard. So there is a little bit of a tactile gap right there. Nothing extreme though. Nothing outside the realm of normal for a $240 guitar. 
satin finish on the back of the neck. Nice and smooth, nice and comfortable as far as finishes go. I think a lot of people enjoy that satin style finish on a neck. The finish on the guitar itself, I'm not seeing any quality control issues. No weird hiccups in that metal flake. It's a light, misty metal flake. But yeah, it looks, you know, factory perfect. No weird chips or anything around the neck pocket. Oh, there's a crack right there in the back plate. Someone screwed down the back plate just a little bit too hard and they cracked it on the edge there. That's a bummer. Let's try it with a little bit of overdrive. Oh yeah, I should tune it first. Here's the neck pickup with some dirt. Even on the neck pickup, this guitar sounds and feels bright. is the number four position. I kind of wish this was a full single coil guitar because that does actually sound really nice in a stratty sort of way. Middle. Oh, that is bright. If you want bright pickups, this Pacifica has them. the bridge pickup. I think the action could be a little bit lower on this. The neck is laser straight. It's, it's perfectly straight. So I wonder what will happen if I lower the action just a tad to get a little bit faster down on the higher frets here. Well, it's out of tune now. <laughs> I'm gonna do my thing where I take it apart and check everything out and then put a fresh set of strings on here. Same gauge, same brand, same model string that is on the Xavier and do a full setup with my D'Addario maintenance kit here. Mirroring the Xavier as close as I can get it so I can do a really accurate side-by-side -side comparison with the two guitars. Yeah, let's do it. Let's get started. All the strings are coming out without getting stuck in the block. That's always nice. Let's take a peek under the hood. I want to see what's under here. Something nice about the D'Addario maintenance kit is it has a little magnet thing right there for collecting your screws. All right, what's under the hood? Swimming pool route. Uh, same bumpy texture I'm used to finding in the routes of affordable guitars. A little bit tricky to get this flipped around. The leads are pretty short in there. Right, we... Nothing incredibly special back here. The humbucker is labeled GB. G and B pickup company. Little mini pots here that are labeled Alpha. And the single coils look a lot like single coils I found in Mexican fenders 
at least the Mexican fenders of my youth. Seems like the Mexican fenders have all been going up in quality, which is, uh, you know, expected with how much more expensive the Mexican fenders are now. When I first started playing electric guitar, Mexican fenders were like 375, brand new. Totally different build style back then though, back in the 90s. And now Mexican fenders are on the edge of $1,000, sometimes under, sometimes over. I really do think Fender has done a great job of pumping up the quality of Mexican fenders though. They're a very different build than the uh, Mexican fenders I was messing around with in the 90s and the 2000s. All right, new strings. Fresh set of D'Addario XT coated strings, which has been my preferred make and model string for a while now. I like to use 11s through 49s. Ooh, I should take a look underneath the, uh, the trim cover too to see what that block looks like. All right, we've got a very thin block back here. That's one way that the, um, the Xavier has a higher quality thing going on. Uh, I don't know if you can see it here, but it's got a nice thick block in there. I'll pull a screen grab from the Xavier video. That's, you know, what I used to find in Mexican Fenders all the time and even, you know, Squires and stuff too. All the cheap guitars used to come with this razor thin style block. Typical kind of gritty routing in there for a $200 guitar. Not too bad about that crack. It's not the sort of thing that I would return a guitar over, but it is a little bit of a bummer to have a crack in your, uh, in your plastics like that. It's just because someone got a little bit too aggressive tightening down the screws when they put this together. Eventually that'll crack all the way. But I tend to like take the back plates off all my guitars permanently anyways because I like to be able to make quick adjustments to the springs. So personally for me that's really not a big deal. But you know, it does show that there is a little bit of a slip up in the quality control of the factory. Something left the factory with a little bit of a crack in it, which is not ideal. But for a $240 guitar, you know, that's really not that huge of a deal. All right, now I'm gonna tune it up. I'm gonna spend probably about a day playing this, comparing it myself to the Xavier, and then I'll come back for my final thoughts and judgments between these two guitars. I'm back. It's the next day. I spent about an hour setting this up yesterday and then a couple hours playing it last night and this morning. Really getting used to it, really kind of feeling out what it sounds like, what it feels like. You know, getting to know this guitar. I'll bring up the Xavier here. Let's see if I can do this without a terrible accident. Oh, yikes. That was sketchy. <laughs> so anyways, the way that I set up this guitar is the way that I set up all the guitars the Afford Strat, I use the little measuring tool here to basically replicate the action settings of the previous winning guitar. So each string I measured at the 12th and the 5th fret. And I, I measured the uh, the first fret as well to check if there was you know any big differences there. And I tried to replicate the action, the settings of the strings pretty much identically to the previous guitar. Uh, no big discrepancies at the first fret here. They're both very, very similar, which is nice to know because if a nut is cut improperly, you can get detuning 
in the cowboy chord area. So that's good to know with this guitar. It was really, really easy for me to dial in the same exact settings across all the strings here. Uh, no problems there. And it plays a lot better now. I'll say that, a good setup makes a big difference, especially with a budget guitar, with an affordable guitar. Like both these guitars sit at like the 230, 240 kind of price range after shipping. And they both play great now, <laughs> they really do. I think there's a difference in the shape of necks between these two, and a lot of that is subjective. But I figure I'll go through some pickup sound comparisons here, and then we'll go through this sheet I have that I used in the last video to kind of go by the numbers and figure out which one is better or worse. Because honestly, in this case, I think they're really, really close. Like they really, really, really are close. Off the top of my head, I couldn't tell you right now which one would win as far as like quality goes. And as far as like which one I would recommend to a player. I think personally, this one is my personal favorite out of the two just because it is so traditionally Strat-like where this is pretty untraditional. But I, I'm going to try to not let that color how I judge these. I'm gonna to try to let the numbers do it. So let's do some pickup sound comparisons. Which is actually one of the big differences between the two. And I actually uh, used this little ruler from the maintenance kit to set the height of the pickups exactly the same across both guitars. So you're hearing both sets of pickups the same distance away from the strings. I'm going to use the Imperial Mark II by Tone King for the amp in this video. Just by itself, I'm not going to combine it with any other amps. Uh, and I'm not going to use a ton of effects. I'm going to rely on the clean channel and the drive channel from there. I might flick on uh, a reverb pedal or a delay pedal or something like that. But I'm not going to get into distortion pedals or overdrive pedals or even fuzz pedals with this. Because I want you to hear what the pickups sound like hitting a tube overdrive or a really clean tube amp. So here is the Pacifica on the bridge position. Oh, also on the Pacifica, I had to add an extra spring because the heavier gauge of strings that I put on here was pulling the bridge forward and there wasn't a lot of room to tighten this. I did a little bit and decided it would be better to do an extra spring. So I went that direction with it. So this has four springs and I'm pretty sure this only has three. Yeah, so there is a difference there. I set up both bridges to be about the same, right where I like a strap bridge to be, where it gently kind of clicks into the body. It definitely makes contact with the body when you let go of the wiggle stick, but then it's also fairly easy to you know, do some light little divey sorts of surfy manipulation. I also applied this lube from the D'Addario maintenance kit to both of the guitar's nuts. Uh, I'd already applied it to this one, but I figured might as well have a fresh application there just so that they're on equal ground. Let's see how it holds tune. Not perfect, but not bad for a good dive like that. These strings are still only a few hours old as far as playability goes, so they might still be breaking in a bit. But what I've experienced so far using the trim on here, it's landing within kind of just reasonable uh, uh, performance <laughs> as far as, uh, you know, strat trims go. I also applied Teflon tape to the threads of the trem arm. I also reapplied it to this so that they're on equal ground there. The only reason I do that is to tighten up the way it fits in there and make sure you don't get, you know, 
droopy wiggle stick syndrome. <laughs> All right, the pickups. Here is the bridge pickup. The number two position. It's kind of a stratty sound there. The middle. Number four. the neck. All right, over to the Xavier now. I think the pickups definitely sound different between these two guitars, but I don't think one sounds better or worse than the other. They're different styles. The Pacifica has a more modern, kind of higher output, punchier sort of pickup. And these are very squarely like a classic throwback, vintage Strat sort of sound. They've got a lot of character. They're not as high output. They don't have as much punch to them. They might be disappointing to people who like to do, you know, like higher output, higher performance, like high gain sorts of stuff. But for someone who's looking for a classic Strat sound, I think that these are preferable versus the Pacifica. Maybe you'll agree with me, maybe you'll disagree with me. And I've dropped my pick. Very classic Strat bridge twang there. Here is the number two position. Quacky, quacky, quacky. Like this is classic Strat sounds from this guitar right now. Which is a good thing or a bad thing, depending on your preferences, right? The middle position. Number four. And the neck. Let's do a dive test. Make sure I'm in tune starting out. I was a little off during all of that, but not a whole lot. Yeah, a little bit off. I'd say it's more off than the Pacifica was, which is, you know, pretty significant considering these strings are well broken in at this point. The B string was the main culprit. the neck pickup on this. Like, I think that is the best sound in this guitar. All right, let's try some drive sounds now. This is just the lead channel from the Tone King. It's kind of funny using a uh, $2,600 amplifier to shoot out $240 guitar. <laughs> I have become a YouTube guitar stereotype. What can I do? What can I say? I'm sorry. But you use the tools that you think are going to do the best job, and that's what I'm doing in this video. A little quick back and forth between the clean and the dirty on the bridge pickup here. All 
right, back to the dirty. <laughs> Number two position. I do have a splash of reverb on in the amp. Hopefully that's not distracting to people. I mean, it was on the whole time up to now. So, you know, I'm locked in. Here is the middle pickup. The number four position. And the neck position. That was the bridge pickup. Here's the number two position. The middle position. Sloppy, but you know, what can I do? Here is the number four position. And the neck. sound. It's got so much soul to it. So all in all, these are much more modern sounding pickups, higher output. Uh, they seem to really punch. They've got a lot of high end kind of like bright cutting character to them. Uh, sometimes it lends to a bit of a grindy sound in the drive that I'm not totally fond of, but if I was going to recommend one of these guitars to like a new player, like a beginner, that might be something that pushes me towards the Pacifica over the Xavier. I think a new player is going to get along with this uh, a little bit better where this is more of like a cork sniffer, kind of like chasing vintage sounds kind of set of pickups. All right, let's, uh, Let's get them both up on the table and I'll go through the sheet here and we'll figure out which one's the best and which one's the worst. I don't think either, either of these is like the worst, but which one is going to get sent out and which one is going to stay. We'll put it in that frame. All right. Headstock. Yamaha versus Xavier. This is a very subjective aesthetic sort of criteria here. There's the Yamaha headstock. It's unique. It's their own headstock shape. They're not copying anyone really. I mean, there's a little bit of a fender influence the way it turns to a bulb down here. But the fact that it swoops inwards 
it's concave there, it's concave here. It's very unique. But I'm not a fan of it. <laughs> I'm honestly not. And I think the Xavier headstock is much more aesthetically pleasing to me. I mean, this is very subjective. This is all just my personal taste. But I think nine times out of 10, I'm gonna pick the Xavier headstock over that Yamaha. I mean, it's not, you know, it's not fully doing the Fender thing, which I find to be aesthetically normal, just probably be because of cultural reasons, because it's what I'm used to as like the name brand sort of thing. But this kind of homage to that shape is a lot more uh, aesthetically pleasing to me. So I'm gonna give that point to the Xavier. Tuners, I actually didn't notice. Probably because both of them have tuners that are fine. I didn't notice any sort of jumpiness on either of them. They're so close. They're so close that uh, I, I think that's even. They both get a point for that. Uh, the, the tuners are great. They're, they're smooth, they're stable, there's no jumpiness. These feel a little bit looser, but I don't think that's a bad thing. I could probably tighten them up by tightening the screw on the end, but there's no jumpiness to them, so they're both fine. Necks, this is all personal preference. I prefer the shape of the neck on the Xavier. It's a more classic, kind of fill my hand sort of feel. The edges of the fretboard are slightly rolled, which is much, much more comfortable to me. Uh, the edges of the fretboard on the Pacifica are very sharp. They're not rolled at all. And the shape is a little bit unusual to me. I'm not totally sure how to describe it. It's more of a modern feel, but it, like there's just something about it that doesn't feel my ha hand like in a comfortable way. Like there's a, there's a significant gap. I wonder if I should, can take a picture of that. There's a visual difference between the way my hand connects with the neck versus the other neck. I'm gonna try to remember. Okay, so I'm gonna lock my knuckle, this knuckle right here, and the knuckle of my thumb around it. You can kind of see that gap behind my hand. Let's see if I can replicate that. That's on the fourth fret. Oh, this is this is a sketchy way of comparing things. Yeah, I don't know if there's any visual difference here. But I'll say that right in this area, this neck fills my hand in a much more comfortable way. It feels a lot uh, more familiar to me. So neck, I'm gonna give to the Xavier. Frets, the Xavier has better frets, it does. Uh, these are a little bit sharper around that bevel. It's not bad. They're not bad frets at all. And once I did the setup on this guitar, my hand held the neck slightly differently because I wasn't compensating for high action when, I, when the action was lower. Then my hand held it differently and I barely even noticed the edges of the frets. Uh, the frets are just slightly better on this. They're just slightly smoother on the edges. Uh, it looks like it. it's definitely a smaller fret wire, so that might have something to do with it. Again, that lends to you know, a bit of a vintage feel, which I might be connecting to better. So the, the Xavier gets the frets. Nut! There's something a little bit funky about the Pacifica and how the low E string is, is really just resting on the top of it. And I haven't run into any issues with it, you know, popping off or anything like that. But consider the fact that this seems like it's a little bit more tuning stable with trem use. And I'm not a nut scientist. <laughs> you know, I famously, that's one of the few things I don't work on on guitars is nuts. I don't feel confident doing that. And don't try to talk me into it commenters. Don't tell me that I can cut nuts. I, I don't want to. I don't want to go down that path in my life. But anyways, I'm going to call it a tie between the nuts just because this one, it's, it seems to be more tuning stable, which is a lot. 
I wonder why that is. It might be the string trees. There's extra string trees on uh, on the Xavier, and that might be what caused the B string to bind up a bit. Bridge. If this said bridge saddles, they would be even. They would just be flat out even, because it's you know from the top they're functionally the same bridge. Looks like the same exact materials being used. They might honestly come from the same factory, the same parts, because they they really are identical in appearance and feel. I couldn't detect any difference between them. But the Xavier has a big block behind the bridge and this has one of those razor thin, like 90s made in Mexico Squire style bridge blocks. Man, the Xavier, so far the Xavier is sweeping it. Pickups. That's subjective. It really is. I think I could hard line this and be like, well, this is a full Strat style thing. This is a Ford Strat. There's not a humbucker in the bridge, but I'm not going to do that. I, we're going to separate that kind of connection as far as this being a fat Strat style thing. They're both Strats. They're both Strats. I'm going to say that the pickups are even. They're different styles. I prefer this style, but this style is completely valid. And I think a lot of players would prefer this style and I think it would lend to a beginner much, much better. It would be a much better experience for a bender, beginner guitarist that's not quite sure what they want out of a guitar yet, but this is better for an experienced guitarist that knows that they know they want Strat sounds. So that's gonna be even. General quality control. This had that crack in the spring cavity plate. That was really the only quality control issue I found on this guitar. Out of the box, this guitar, I remember the, the jack was loose and flopping around. I think there was something else. I can't remember. There were little bits of like polish on the edges of some of the frets. I remember that, you know, like polishing compound. I'm gonna say, I, I'm gonna say they're even on quality control. I think those two issues are like, I mean, technically this is not fixable. You could replace this, but this was easily fixable. It would have been frustrating for a new player who doesn't know what's going on. No, I think the quality control is, is about the same. And the fact that they're both like glitter finishes and there's not any major like hiccups in the finish that I found on either of them. It's fairly impressive that you can get a, you know, a mid $200 guitar with a really fun sparkly finish is really great. It honestly is. Like I'd love this finish on a thousand dollar guitar. Absolutely. The metallic red, I'm not as big a fan of, but I think that the sparkle and metallic is done really well. It's really clean. It's a fully like perfect factory finish. So yeah, I think the quality control on these both is, is pretty much identical. They have their little hiccups here and there, but they're both things that are, you know, forgivable. Playability. Once, once they're set up. I mean, I already scored the neck and I chose this as personal preference, but you know, everyone's hand is different. They might prefer the shape of that neck. They might prefer the, you know, more jumbo fret sort of thing going on. I think playability is identical on these. As far as like scoring them fairly, I think, I think they're both totally fine. Most strat like. I feel like that's not fair. I should, you know, we're gonna we're gonna cross this one out because by default this would win just be by having three single coils and this has a humbucker and the bridge. I feel like with that we kind of have to throw that out. And also you've got a somewhat unique body shape here. Which in a way can be a negative. And also you've got different controls here with a master volume and a master tone where you don't have the strat sort of thing here. But that, that you know, we get rid of that by taking out most strat like. Um, but I think the, the, big, the biggest negative with this being a unique design is that I'm not 
I, I really doubt that this pit guard can be replaced with parts pit guards where this, you could go wild ordering all kinds of different parts pit guards and swapping it out. But I, we're gonna overlook that um, just because already the Xavier is winning on so many points and I feel a little bad. And also that's kind of like, do we factor in the ability to make aftermarket modifications into this scoring? Tell me in the comments. Do you think that's a uh, do you think that would be a fair metric to score things by? Pleasure factor. If it was me judging for me, then this would clearly win that and you know, I think I already judged a few of these things subjectively. I'm trying to give it a chance. I I really am. Because it is a really good guitar, especially for 230 bucks, 240 bucks whatever it was. It is a really good guitar, but I think pleasure factor. I, I much, I much more enjoy the Xavier. Damn, I thought it was gonna be a lot closer. Looks, sorry, it's the Xavier. Damn, I mean the Yamaha still got plenty of points. It still got five points, but because it was tied on so many things, the Xavier got so many more. 11 and it was close man so much of this was so close because they both are completely fine guitars i can recommend both of these guitars to new players to experienced players that want a mod platform or something to fill out their quiver or something like that but there's different reasons why i would recommend that or that the numbers make it seem like it was a landslide but it was so much of it is so close and so subjective that, you know, obviously a different player could judge this differently. This isn't a clear cut thing like, you know, like, oh, this guitar is clearly not as good and clearly not as enjoyable. They're both very enjoyable guitars. It came down to a lot of personal preference. And this is gonna be controversial because this is so beloved and has been beloved for so long in the uh, guitar community as a really safe bet. It is a, it is, and I agree, it is a completely safe bet as an affordable guitar. And it has a lot of very redeeming qualities. What do you guys think? Did I do this unfairly? Did I miss a trick? One of the reasons why I was stuck in like this indecision cycle as far as selecting this guitar for the next one is I thought it was going to be a clear winner. <laughs> I thought like, oh, people love Pacificas. They, they are a standard recommendation for affordable guitars. Like surely it's going to blow this out of the water. And I was afraid it would be, you know, too good too soon in this series. <laughs> So anyways, this is the part of a Ford Strat where I tell you how you can win the loser, how you can win the Yamaha Pacifica. I'm gonna do something I did recently. Uh, I did a video of that Dan Electro Fab Tone pedal. And at the end of the video, I sent you to a friend's YouTube channel to comment. And then that friend selected the winner. I still need to ship that out. I'm so sorry, the winner was selected and I'm gonna ship it out today after I'm done filming this. But anyways, I'm gonna send you over to Get Offset. Link down in the description. I want you to watch the whole video, and then I want you to write a summary in the comment section of the video. Like include as much or as little detail as you want. Like keep in mind that Emily over at Get Offset writes articles professionally. She's a copywriter professionally. She writes articles for major guitar magazines and stuff like that. So she's probably gonna score you on your writing ability and uh, you know, the quality of your prose and whatnot. <laughs> but like I said, write a summary of her video that I linked to down in the description. She'll pick a winner and she'll get your address and I'll ship you 
this guitar. Uh, by the way, I need to mention the sponsor, Diderio. I am the one who pitched to them this series. I'm the one who pitched the details of the sponsorship as far as including a pack of strings and the maintenance kit, which I use. I legitimately use this maintenance kit all the time, which is why I asked them to include it as part of the sponsorship. And also, they covered the costs of things like shipping the winning guitar and things like that. So Diderio, huge thanks for sponsoring this series. They signed up for three episodes. This is the third. Um, I'm gonna pitch the numbers to them again to show what the return was. If they you know, decide to sponsor this again, I'm sure I'll keep going. And in that case, recommend in the comment section which guitar you think I should cover next. Maybe I'll make it happen even if I don't have a sponsor, but it has been really wonderful to have Diderio on board to include things like this and to cover the cost of shipping. So yeah, click the links to check these things out. <laughs> to show Diderio thanks for making this series possible. Uh, I mean, a big part of that has been that I have been buying these guitars. They are not supplied by the manufacturer. So these guitars, as they arrive to me, is how they would arrive to you. I ordered them the same way that you would order guitars. So keep that in mind. Diderio you know, significantly helped with this. I'll say that. All right, guys, I'm gonna play out with some sort of loop jam going in between these two guitars. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, dislike, leave me rude and nasty comments. Support us on Patreon. Buy a shirt if you're naked and stay grounded. Mm-hmm.